computer gives you all information that you need to have. Today's Wall Street Journal has a lot of interesting stuff. It has a special section for the 250 best companies. Nine out of the 10 companies at the top are technology companies. What you have here, I did it purposely. So, I don't know out of these 250 companies which one is going to be in business five years from now, 10 years from now, or 15 years from now. I don't know I'm going to be alive 15 years from now, but I just mark to see what is happening for my cases of misleading and mismanagement. You know, don't only mislead and mismanage, but the situation can change and companies can be out of business, even if they do the right thing in an environment that doesn't accept that right thing. So, we have also another interesting case that says what people expect whenever they want to invest. And that's on page B9. And you have what is happening with the balance sheet of the central banks around the world and how that balance sheet is increasing and decreasing. I want you to look at it and see how that has impact to what is happening to the stock market. Let's play, right? Last week, I visited my colleague Abdullah who came from Turkey and he gave me good gifts. And we were talking, he said he moved all his retirement stuff out of the stock market because he is expecting the stock market to crash. It went too high up and maybe we will have an adjustment. He said, I'm 10 years older than you and I want to have my retirement money. What are you going to do? I said, here, tell me about money. I care about my health better than my money. He said, yeah, but I need to know what is happening. Who is right? He's right or I am right? And I want you to be able to go and see different graphs. The graph that we looked last hour is something we videotaped it, and you can go on to YouTube, or I will send you the link and find out. And it's a study about the fluctuation from 2007 to present of Microsoft and Apple together. And as I look at the same graph, the same graph gives you also two different indices. And one index is the Russell 200 index, and that's not 2000 index, that's a lot of companies, 2000 companies, that they tell you what is happening with these companies and the other index is the energy sector. And I would like you to go to your computer and find out what happened to Russell 2000 and what happened to energy sector. And to them, I gave them only 10 minutes to be able to find out that information. So if I want to have energy sector and I want to put information about the energy sector I click I have several things here and I click one of them and I would put from the standard and poor 500 the energy sector and then since I use the Standard & Poor 500, I would like to put Standard & Poor 500 
is happening in that particular case, Standard and Poor 500. <coughs> I use for the case of simplistically what happened for the last five years. I want to see what's happening in the historical prices, or I want to see the summary, and I want to see what's happening for the last five years, the energy sector. I don't have information for the energy sector for the last five years. I don't have it for the last month. I need to go and look at something else. I look at standard and poor 500. I want to know what's happening over all the period. And what do you see here in this graph is one important thing. I want to go and see another difference. And I will specify another company. What's the company that you use for electricity? here in New York City. Uh, eh? last five years for the maximum amount and I want to find out what is happening between these two different cases standard and full 500 and con Edison and I want first to figure out what is the time period I would like to consider and as I was looking at the previous case last time, last hour, I saw that the big changes are happening in the last three years. And if the big changes are happening for the last three years, I want to take the last three years. I want to go for the starting period from 19, 2015. I'll go for the beginning of the period, the first of the year of 2015 to today. I will apply and have that data. I will download. I'll have this data here. And I'll go for the same period to see what is happening with the market index. I'll select the period, the 1st of January in 2015, up to today. I apply it and I download the data. I have another file. I go into my computer and I open one file see what is going on here. It starts from the 2nd of January 2015 to the present time. I'll go to Con Edison and it has exactly the same period. Which means I want to consolidate data and I will go and I take for the same period I will take for the same period sorry I 
I do. I have something from the previous graph. I had graph in the memory. I will copy the period for the last three years. I'll paste it. That's my time period. Edison. I will specify what I have here. I'll take my closing price. I copy it. I paste it. That information is dollars. Closing. I eliminate the cents amount of this file. I'll take then the closing index of the standard and poor 500. The closing index of standard and poor 500. I paste it and I specify what this is. This is ZSPC as a symbol. This is not a dollar, that's an index. I want to see how one company is related to my market. And as I go and I look at the data, I see something extremely important. These are in different scales. And I want to put them in a graph. And I have a question. Adrian came late. Where is Adrian? Adrian is not here. If I take all that stuff all together for the last three years, and I want to make a comparison. And I want to graph it. What actually do I see? Here is my graph. I said as soon as I have a graph, I want my graph to have colors. And if I have the graph with colors, I want to see what I have in this particular graph. What can you say? Is Con Edison changing its value at all or it stays more or less flat? This is your raw data. You graph it. I want you to be able to go on and within three minutes to say what you can be able to say here. What do you need to do? That's a review. Thus, I will say, you need to have two different scales, which means I will take the standard and pull 500, and I will go on, and I put it in different scale. And as I have these two in different scales, I look at the graph, and the graph now tells me a different story. What else do you do here? Let's see. Yes. Um, I'm using the, the four scale averaging from zero to infinity. Good. Then you adjust the scale. And you don't want the scales to begin from zero, 
but you want the right scale to start from 50 and go to 100. And you want the other scale to be what? started with 2000 and I see that some of my data are cut off mm -hmm. I need to make an adjustment and I see now I went too much and high up I look at my graph and I see what I can do I can go and I can say okay I can make some adjustments. And if I make some adjustments, then I see something that it's useful for me to say a story. Mr. Lin, can you tell me a story about what you see with this graph? that story not to be one paragraph. I want that story to be a little bit more than one paragraph. I want two, three paragraphs for this case. What do I want you to do? In one paragraph, I want you to tell me what's happening with the standard and poor index, brown. The other thing, I want you to tell me with what's happening with Con Edison. Blue. And the third story, that's the most important, I want you to be able to compare the two of them. But you cannot be able to compare the two of them if you don't know what's happening with each one separate. And I want you, the story to have two parts. In the previous hour, I talked about putting a trend line here. And if I want to put a trend line, I can put a trend line for different periods. If I can see my data, if I can see my data here, that this is for a long period of time. And then as it is for a long period of time, I can make an adjustment. Okay. I have the graph as I like it to be. And I want to make a story. I want two stories. More. I want one more story to be only for the index. I want another story to be for Con Edison. And as I want the story to be for the index, I'll adjust the index in such a way that would correspond to my previous graph and be consistent. This is one part of the story here. This is the other part of the story here. And I would like to say three stories. What is happening with the company? What is happening with the market index? And what is happening when you see one next to the other? And I'll start one by one. I will focus on the index. As I focus on the index, what do I want to see? Is everything overall as a trend going up or down? And you tell me it's going up. I click my data and I put a trend line. 
and as I put the trend line, I want to know some piece of information that this trend line is giving me. I don't want anything to be there. I put color, and as I put color in that box, it takes away the line. And I want you to tell me what information you have now. Yes. I want plain English. How much faith do you have in this line? Is this line something you could take it seriously or not? And if you will take it seriously, how much? What are you going to look at? And is what is our square? Ibrahim, what's our square? It's a correlation. R square is what? In plain English. I mean, R square is telling us the relationship between both of the graph, graph, how much. I mean, so they both are strong, they both have the strong positive correlation. Okay. R square here is 89%. 89% of what? You may say that it's not 89%, it's 90%. Be relaxed, we have many people here. What is that 90%? And I want to learn. If I want to learn, I'll go on and I'll check the same thing with the other case. I'll go to Con Edison and I'll put the trend line. I'll get that part and I will see that this trend line, this line, is not 90%, it's 70%. I will go on and I'll put them together. One is 70 percent and pay attention to what I do. I take the color. The other is 90%. <coughs> what is the difference between these two lines? Do you want me to ask you a tricky question? Yes or not, Valeria? But I will. Are these two lines intersecting each other? No. 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 Because they have different axes. One is in 50 to 100, and the other is into 1700s to 1300s. They are located in different ways. Do they look like intersecting each other? Mm -hmm. Yes. Why did I do it? Because I want to fool you or because I want you to focus into something else. Focus into something else. But when you focus into something else, I want you not to be fooled. And I want you to focus in something else. What do I want to focus? Two lines, two straight lines. If you have a straight line, the most important part is to look at the slope of that line. Which line has highest slope? The one that looks steeper or the one that is actually is of a higher slope? And can I make the slopes to look different? I'll go here and I look at things that are separate. And I'm asking the same question again. Which slope is steeper? This one or this one?
this one or this one? Can I make this slope? Can I make this graph in such a way that would look with a high slope? Is this slope steep? <coughs> no, it isn't. It looks like. What do I want you to learn in my class? You need to pay attention to what <coughs> your data are telling. The slope is here. What is this slope? 1%. That's a very small slope. Why do you see it as steep? Because I made the graph like this. What did I do? A makeup. Why do we do makeup? Because we want to attract attention. And because we want to emphasize certain things. So what do we emphasize here? That things are moving up. Do they move up? If I say these are moving up fast, I would lie. I'm not allowed to lie. But I'm allowed to make a presentation saying that this is having a trend that is not very reliable trend. Why it's not very reliable trend? Because the overall line, the overall line explains only 70% of the ups and downs. And the overall line usually is in the middle of the ups and downs. And I want to see the other part is this exactly the same? I'll copy it, I'll paste it. And as I go on and I go and I copy and I paste it, I want to readjust. So one graph would look like the other. And if one graph looks like the other, as I adjust them, they look as if they have the same slope. Do they have the same slope? No. Which line is a better line? The second one. Why is the second one? Because it's closer to the moving of ups and downs. Can I use the line to make a prediction? Yes, what do I do? I go here and I format my trend line. Dito, what do I need to do now? I go to move the line forward. How much? Can I move it three months? Nine periods. I have it like here. Can I move it more? 180 periods. That's a different change. Can I go and move forward this line for 180 periods? And I want to make a choice what is happening in both cases. Is this the only option I have? Or I can do other trend lines. Or I can do other trend lines. I said I don't want you to check your mail. I don't want you to check your cell phone. I want to put all your phones in your rear pocket. I take this line and I want to see it differently, fast. I paste it and I copy it. And I want at the end of the class to give me the work that you are doing it as I as you follow what I'm doing here. I want you to take it and make the adjustment. I want you to take it and make the adjustment. Did you change your graph?
do I change the graph? Or not? Do I change the graph? Yes or no? No. I adjust the size of the graph. As I adjust the size of the graph, I change your perspective of what you see. I give you exactly the same information. Which graph you would like to pay more attention? The line or you have another alternative? Or you have another option? And I would like to focus on, on Edison. And as I look at Con Edison, I want to put another trend line. And I have other options. How many options do I have? John. That's why I asked. I want to see trends of what is happening to Con Edison how many options I have to present trends. I click at my data. Do I have any other option besides the straight line? Using Excel. Do I have options for the strand line here? Okay. If you look at things, if in finance you look at things, you are completely lost. If you don't want to be lost, you need to start making things. As I do it, you do it. And what I want you to do is I want you to pick up a company. Don't pick up Con Edison. Pick up something else that you buy things. And I want you to go and get data for the last three years from the beginning of January 2015 to the present. And I want you to have that particular stock there. And I want you to see where is that stock traded. And I want you to get an index. So you will see how the market is moving. And you click at the data. And you want to insert the trend line. Automatically goes to the line. Why? Because that's the most simple case. Is this the only case? You can go on to exponential. You can go to logarithmic. You can go to polynomial. You can go to a power. You can go to a moving average. Which means you have six alternative options to find out a trend. What is happening? And I want you to explore all these six options of looking at the trend of any company. You want to have a case, and then you want to forecast. How do you forecast? You see that you can forecast. You go on and you forecast. You forecast if you have a line, and you make a choice. Let's go <coughs> on and take exponential. Exponential gives me a different line. The curvature is different than what I have here. And I want to forecast. I want to go forward. I take that information and I see what I have as a line. Now I go on to this case here. And I want to forecast. How much I forecasted here? I went forward 190 day, 180 days. I go to another case, and I want to go 180 days forward to forecast. And I want to see what happens. I would like to take the line, and I would like to take the R square. The R square is better or not from the previous case? The R square here is higher or lower? And is it substantial difference or marginal difference? <coughs> the 
these are the two questions that I have. What do I have? Can he say that that's a marginal difference? Both of them are 70% reliable. And I want to explore if there are any other options. I get my data again. I click and I look at the trend line. Now I look at the logarithmic trend line. I look at the equation of the logarithmic. That's again about 70%. And I have a question. What is the most simple way to understand an exponential function, a logarithmic function, or a linear function. And Ibrahim says a linear function. I don't remember how to interpret the E number or the logarithm. And I said, okay, if this is the situation, forget about this one and forget about this one. Forget about the other part. Keep the straight line. And Ibrahim asks why. And says, because I want to see if I have any alternative. And I look at another alternative. <coughs> and the alternative is polynomial. <coughs> and Lind says, wow. Polynomial. I learned that concept in my math class. So, Lynn, what is polynomial? And I'm going to help you. What is polynomial? And as I try to help Lynn, he says, put the equation and put the R square so I can look at it. And if I can look at it, I would be able to tell you. And he says, this is a little bit better than the previous one. And I ask why it's better. And he says, because he says, because the R squared is higher. R squared is higher because it explains more about the variations that we have. But Ibrahim says, yeah, but what's the big difference between 70 and 72? Is it a big difference or not? Kani says, yes, it's some difference that you need to be able to take into account. And I go to this line here, and I change the order of the polynomial from 3, can I make it 1? Do I have a polynomial of order 1 here? And you tell me no. And I said, I'm going to go back and change your algebra great and I'll put you all of you F and you will go back to algebra to tell me do you have a polynomial of a degree of order one here I'll give you a benefit of a doubt can you go on and change the polynomial and make it of a higher order and now Kani says R squared becomes 75 percent. <coughs> That's much higher than 70 percent. And Kani starts having an appetite now. She says, if you make it from 2 to 3 and jumps up in R squared, which means it explains more, what is happening? You go here. And I want to forecast. We can forecast for the next 180 periods. That's going to give you much more rosy forecast. We go back to Canis and Canis say, yeah, but 
I want to change the polynomial, make it of order four. As it changes the polynomial, and C tries to forecast with that polynomial, C gets completely different case. And at that point, Adrian says, Professor, what were you telling me so far? And I have to say, in class, you have to be from the beginning to the end. Because John was here and was lost, and Adrian was not here and is completely lost. Right? Yes. And I'm going to go back and do the same thing again. I was just um, asking, what's the difference between the straight line uh, it, um, slope and the curve and the slope? Correct. I'm going to go on and review that stuff. Yeah. Because I know you went to algebra, you got the passing point, you have the A, but then you move, and you forget it doesn't mean anything to you. <laughs> and if it doesn't mean anything, I will go back. But before I go back, I'll go forward. I'll change the order of a polynomial from four to five. And I want to see what you see here, Mr. Ling. What do you see as I change the order of a polynomial? And I go on to the polynomial again. Can I change the order? I can go up to six. I go on and see what is going on with the six. I he see here the line. Can I go to the polynomial? Can I make it larger than the 6? And I can't do anything. And I do the, the opposite path. What do I see here? Substantial difference from 70% to 84%. Not only substantial difference, but as I move down, I move down of that polynomial. I see that the forecast is different. I play around. Now I don't know anything, right? And I'm confused. I change the order of a polynomial. And as I change the order of a polynomial, few things change. Something that I understand and something I don't understand. What I understand, the forecast goes up and down. I don't know why, but it goes up and down. The other thing that I see changing and I understand is the R squared. The R squared is that particular function, how much explains the data I have. And as I move further down, I see things change. And I go to the second degree polynomial. And I have the straight line. And I want to know what is a polynomial. What is a polynomial? I'll take that down and I will have the space to write. What is a polynomial? In my previous class, two guys that they were from a Russian speaking countries, former Soviet Union, they gave me the answer. So, Victoria. Valerian is here. Is he, are you here or not? Jonathan is not here. Adrian is here. John is here. Who is going to tell me what is a polynomial? Canis is going to tell me what's polynomial. He is in a calculus class. Calculus 1 or 2? Calculus 2. Wow. So what is a polynomial? What is a polynomial? Ibrahim wants to say it before Kanis. Are you in calculus too? Hmm? You are one step lower, so you have to wait. Kanis. I know, I like to torture people. Polynomial is. When there is something that I don't know, that is dependent on something that I know, but something that I know is 
interacting with itself. And when things are interacting with itself, they interact with many ways. One way is to not exist. The other way is to exist. A third way is to exist and have an interaction with itself. Another way is to exist and have multiple interactions to itself. Clear? Now we go on to back to your algebra and I want to talk about powers. Why did I say Adrian? The first thing is, does not exist. What does this mean? That you took calculus, you took algebra, you passed it, you're moving on. Do you know it? No. Does it exist or not? It doesn't exist. How do you indicate that something does not exist? To the power of zero. What is something to the power of zero? Ibrahim says that's one. What is something to the power of one? No. Something to the power of one exists. We don't put it. Something interacts to itself. Okay. Something that interacts to itself in a multiple terms. How many times? Three times? You have them a power. What do you have? How the two variables are related. How they are related. Based upon the coefficients. What are the coefficients? You can say it's A, it is B, it is C, it is D. How they are related? Based upon how things are added or subtracted. And you may have relations. This may be positive or negative. This may be positive or negative. And positive or negative. This may be positive or negative. So what do you have? You have the idea of polynomials. What is a polynomial? When we have many things. When do we have many things? From this point and after. What is happening when we don't have many things? We don't have polynomial. We have monomial. How do we have two things in a monomial is my question. And Sasa says, when you have two things in a monomial, you indicate two ideas. One is you don't have it, and the other is you have it only as one thing, simple. So when you don't have it, the power is zero. The only thing that you have is A. You write Y is something that is dependent upon A. The A is not related to X. Like what? I wake up in the morning. I start teaching. I have full of energy. I slept seven hours. Am I tired? No. But as time is going on, I get tired. And I want to see how I will get tired. That is related to how much time is going on. And affects a case. This particular situation is a binomial of a first degree. Why? Because the variable that explains appears only once to itself. And then it's something that does not have that variable. Although, technically speaking, you can write it. And you can go to the next step. The next step is a polynomial of a second degree. It has another factor that controls it. And it has a relationship. That's a second degree polynomial. And then you can go on. You can have a third degree polynomial, fourth degree polynomial, fifth and sixth. 
all of them can be calculated if you have d to the power of 3 automatically. I don't want you to know what the computer is going to do for you, and I don't care if this is what they taught you in math. Because you can go here, you can go here, and you can say, this is Con Edison's price going up and down. I want to see what kind of a trend it has. If I want that trend to be polynomial, then I can control it automatically. I can go from a second degree to a third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, etc. As I control it, I can be able to see what is happening with my forecast. My forecast is a large period of a year. If the degree of polynomial changes, my forecast can change. If the degree of polynomial changes, also I go here, also the equation can change. And if that polynomial changes, the equations can be different. The equations are done automatically. Do you see them? Do you see them? Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. The equations are calculated automatically. Same thing as the R square. I don't want you to be bothered how to make the equation as long as you understand what you are doing. And what you are doing is the important part. And I want to see what you can do with that. And what you can do is make a forecast. And as you can make a forecast, that forecast tells you a different thing than this one. This says it go up. This says it goes further up. This says it goes down. This says it goes more down. And I want to understand what is the meaning of a polynomial. I want you to know what is happening with polynomial. Besides Canis and besides Ibrahim, anybody else is in calculus class. Are you? 206? Yes. What do you learn in 206? A math. Algebra. You learn that the two degree polynomial two degree polynomial relates x to y <coughs> and a two degree polynomial has two possible cases a two degree polynomial has two possible cases Ibrahim what are these cases two degree polynomial Canis says good it's one possible case that would go like this. Another possible case that would go like this. If this is the case, you have a minimum. If this is a case, you have a maximum. And I want you to know something that probably your professor didn't tell you, and it's not even in your math book. When is a minimum and when it's a maximum. And I go to a second degree polynomial. What is a second degree polynomial? Forget the third degree polynomial. You have this case here. What do you really need to know? So you will identify that information to be Latin 1 or Latin 2, to have a maximum or to have a minimum. You need to know one thing that gives you a maximum or it gives you a minimum. What is that? 
Do you know Khan Academy? Yeah. My daughter, when I was asking her a question about math and she didn't know, she was going to Khan Academy. And I want you to go to Khan Academy and find it. And I want you to ask another question that I asked last hour. And Dito gave me an answer because nobody else gave me an answer. And the question is when you go on and you take a math, actually they tell you to solve the problem. And what they do is they give you a case more or less like this. They say that y is 3x squared minus 2 plus 5. And if you have that a problem? 2x, right? 2x, correct. And when you have that kind of a problem, the question in the math is find the solution. Correct, Adrian? Yes. Good, find the solution. And my question is not find the solution. My question is more essential. What is the solution? Because you don't have to find the solution. Who is going to find the solution for you? Ibrahim says, Professor, you are teaching us on technology. And if you are teaching us on technology, <coughs> the computer would find that solution. And I would go on here, and I will say, OK, come on here, and I want to find that particular case and I want to solve what do I want to solve whatever I had there <coughs> what do I have I have the problem here is my problem I have three x squared minus 2x plus 5. And like Ibrahim, I don't want to be bothered about things. I know what to do. I have to solve the problem. And Ibrahim solved the problem. How did he solve the problem? Did he remember the rules? or not. Ibrahim didn't bother to remember the rules. Ibrahim has a slave. That's called technology. He put the case here and he said, this is the solution. What is the solution? And this is the graph of the solution. And what is happening here? you can be able to play more. And I have a question. When I have a real solution and when I have a solution with imaginary numbers. And what is the solution? Okay. I'll go to the other side of the continent. In order to have a solution and have real numbers and not imaginary numbers, what do you need? You can't see it. You need to magnify it. No, 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 I can't the website. Hmm? I'm checking the website. Wolfram Alpha. It can be also an app with three dollars in your cell phone. You can solve any kind of a problem you have. So what do you need to do? Why do I have an imaginary number as a solution? If I have a different case, If 
I have a different case, what do I need to have? So the solution is not going to be a complex solution. Hmm? What? This is y. This is y. Y is equal to this one. What do I need to have so it can be a particular case? I want that to have a solution. And I will go to even more cases. If this is negative, what is happening? Now I see a different part. The solution is not complex. The solution now is real. What do I see? What is the solution? And I'm challenging your knowledge about math because we need to know it. What is the solution? And what if I ask you, what do you need to have so you will have a maximum or a minimum. Why do I ask you to do that? Because I want you to change one thing and turn that graph upside down. And I don't have to go to Asia or Africa to do that, or I may have to go to Africa to do that. So what do I need to make that part having not maximum, but minimum? Valerian, do I need to change a number or a sign? Valerian says the sign, and I try, and I want to do it as a trial and error. What is happening if it's plus? Do I get different, solu different solutions or not? Yeah, different. Are you sure? One solution, one minus square root of five, one plus square root of five. I put it minus. One minus one minus square root of five, square root of five minus one. Different solutions of the same stuff. I want to see it. <coughs> I see the graph here. I see two red points. I make one change. I solve it. I have another solution. I see another case. What do I see? I go back to Valeria. She says, okay, take this minus from here. Solve it. What it happens? It gets another part. Take this and make it a different, what it happens. It has another part. And my question is, hey, professor, time is up. Yeah. What is, what is a polynomial? And why do I need that? Because I need to find out what is happening with my polynomial. Because now, unlike the time that I was a student, you have technology. And you don't need to solve things. And if you don't need to solve things, you can be able to have a solution. Give me one second. You can be able to have a solution. And you can be able to take that particular polynomial and make any type of a polynomial you want. And as you do that, as you do that, what do I want you to do? I want you to play with trend lines. And as I do that, I change the way that I would forecast. But I want to be comfortable. How do I do it? Would I listen to what Kaniz is telling me? And Kaniz says, if you change the order of a polynomial, the R square is better. 
And I said, are you sure? It says, yes. Increase it to five. From 83, it would become 84. Increase it to six. From 84, it stays 84. And then my question is, which one do I prefer? If it's order six, or if it's order five, order six of order five, the R square is the same, but the forecast is different. Do you see it? And the question is, if I want to do technical analysis, which means I want to apply everything that I learn in my math, what do I do so I will be confident? And this is my time up today, and I want to continue on Wednesday, we are going to move from math to statistics to look for the same stuff. Yes. Quick question. So the loudest so I can hear. Um, all right. So the the trend line here, the polynomial trend line, is that have correlation with the? Uh, we discussed? You use something that I don't want to discuss now. Okay. You use the term correlation. Correlation for Wednesday. In the meantime, if you tell me by Wednesday what is correlation, I would greatly appreciate it. <coughs>